The county has some special resources. Peat from the Somerset Moors is one of them. Just stand and watch the way that it was still dug in the 1970s. Peat digging is commonplace in parts of Scotland and the Isles, but it has never developed the skills which are present in Somerset. Looking into and savouring the aroma of a peat fire, I had often wondered what is involved in producing this fuel. With the assistance of Arthur Baker and Geoffrey Moxie, to whom I am greatly indebted, we now take a closer look at their work at Bertle, Somerset. It is also very interesting to note the terms peculiar to these skills. Mumps, benches, banks, hoyles, or is it hiles, riddling the benches? Where, for instance, do their origins lie? It could easily be Anglo-Saxon. The peat was also dug by the Romans to fire their pottery, and it may be that some of the terms are part of their legacy to us. Pretty cold in, in the mornings this time of year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yesterday morning, we saw it. There's the bag with the tools. Yeah. I was used to say, you know, if you see a man in your bag on, why he come and west <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Whether he was full of tools or pheasants was another matter, yeah. was it? Oh, yeah. And this is lading the water? Uh, leaving. Leaving the water. Leaving the water. Yeah. Yes. Well, I used to enjoy that. I put in days and days and days. Yes. In the day, perhaps, we'd work hard all day. Next morning, you go out after a night's rain and be back up where you started. Yeah. You could clear a fair bit too, Geoffrey. Yeah. Oh, yes. I've known four, uh, four acres to what they've got rid of. Like that. Because they haven't got nothing else. No. Well, before no, no. the bumps come in, stand with them at the first pump ever I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now you're hired. Well, you had some land up in Gardner Moor. Half a crown hour would be the church. Half a crown an hour? That was a lot of money then. Yeah, yeah. a quarter. Yeah. But put in at eight hours, like pumping. Just get in the hook to the head there. Uh huh. And that's how, how much? Four foot. Four foot, yeah. Yeah. And you divide that up. When you got it shoveled off, you divide it into six months. I see. Six eighths. You were supposed to, the idea is to get them eight inches high. What we call eight inches high. What's that toll you've got there? Oh, that's the church side. That's the marking outside. Oh, yes. I got another one there somewhere. The proper digging side. Uh-huh. That one there is oh, nearly worn out now. And that's the reason why it's using for that. Because he'd go through it easier. I see, yes. If you had anything very thick, it would clog and stick. That's right. Yeah. It'd be much harder work to to use it. Yes. The peat's not very deep. Not there. No, at all. We can go into the river, and it's running out. I see. Yes. But the river is just one field down from, from where we're digging. Like. And that'll be good stuff on your garden, then. Eh? Oh yes, especially the very top. Yes. And what do you call that? this? Well, oh, that's just stroking out the benches where you've got the mark. That's every stroke that I do like that. That's ten inches. Yes. So a mump is eight inches by nine inches by ten inches. Ten inches long, nine inches deep, eight inches high. What we call high. Yes. That's nice straight lines, Arthur. Well, much lots better. of practice. <laughs> well, yes, I suppose practice make masters, is it? Huh? How many years have you been at it? Oh, I think, well, I think 
when I started, I was about in 17 and a half. Mm -hmm. And I've been on, I dare say, I've cut a few every year since. Oh, yeah. Now you're very old. I'm very old. Just, en just entering in, what we call entering in. And Jeffrey's bearing the yeah, turtle. That's right. But uh, when you had sort of dry, dusty conditions, you sort of put those turfs up on a... On a monk. Oh. On what we call a monk board. Oh, yes. It's still quite wet there. There'll be quite a bit of suction when it's as wet as that. Oh, yeah. 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 I suppose those uh, mumps, what do they weigh? 20 pounds each, pretty well. Well, I should say, I've never actually weighed one. I've meant to do it ever so many times, but I've never done it. Yeah, that peach changing color there a bit now. Oh, yeah. that's, that's the bottom yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's not much good. Not all all together. No. No fiber in it, though. You're still pulling up one by side. That shows the wet parts. The sun is shining. On. The sun is shining into it. Then we did leave them. We think them dry enough to fail. Uh huh. All right. How much peak do you finish up with out of there? Oh, we all go be wait, we will be number. Number of turf. Yeah. Yeah. In this pit here, there's 900. Uh huh. Wait till we across all the other roughly about 10,000. 10,000 turf? Uh -huh. across the Straight across. Yeah. Oil. And when we're drying up, they put up in oil. And then we leave it, the idea is to leave it open everywhere you can. So whichever way the wind comes, go through. And then put it back in what we call left yours, yeah. Just young and putting up. This is what we call putting them in ruffle, in ruffle. Today the monster peat digging machines have moved in. Peat is big business, but not for fuel, for the horticultural trade. The machines do not show any remorse or re appreciation of the intrinsic beauty of the moors, the last bits of wilderness and refuges for many wild birds and animals are quickly disappearing. Once lost, they can never be regained. I would once more ask, how do you value your heritage? We have to equate modern needs to modern methods. At the same time, we must try to conserve some of the items of value from the past, if only on film. If this film has helped to establish concern in you, the viewer, it has been well worthwhile.